The story behind Prozac, the killer drug. In the face of ever-mounting evidence of the dangers of the psychiatric drug Prozac, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, has balked at moving against the antidepressant, which has accumulated more adverse reaction reports than any other substance in the 24-year history of the FDA's adverse drug reaction reporting system. Based on documents recently obtained by Freedom under the Freedom of Information Act, as of September 16, 1993, 28,623 reports of adverse reactions to Prozac had been received by the FDA. These included such effects as delirium, hallucinations, convulsions, violent hostility, aggression, psychosis, 1,885 suicide attempts, 1,734 deaths, 1,089 by suicide. Both Eli Lilly and company, manufacturer of Prozac, and officials of the FDA were aware that at least 27 deaths had been linked to Prozac's use before the drug was released. As of October 15, 1987, two months before Prozac was allowed on the market, there had already been 15 suicides linked to it, six by overdose, four by gunshot, three by hanging, and two by drowning. Even though a substance had been recalled from the market with as few as two deaths, despite the 27 fatalities linked to Prozac, the FDA officials failed to prevent Prozac from being released onto the market. It was given final FDA approval on December 29, 1987. A document dated March 23, 1986 was a uh, safety review of Prozac by FDA's Richard Capit, who observed that Prozac may exacerbate certain depressive symptoms and signs. Capit, a medical doctor, noted certain clinical risks of mild to moderate severity did appear to be associated with the use of Prozac, as determined by a review of the safety data in this NDA submission. These potential risks include intensification of the vegetative signs and symptoms of depression. The 1986 FDA safety review also discovered that Lilly had failed to report information about the onset of psychotic episodes in people during Prozac's testing. Capit concluded his safety review with this warning. It is suggested that labeling be developed which advises physicians about possible exacerbation of the vegetative manifestations of depressive illness. If the drug is marketed, post-marketing studies should be required to assess more precisely the severity of these potential risks. So as early as 1986, long before Prozac was approved for the market, evidence existed which linked Prozac to worsened symptoms of depression and the onset of psychotic episodes, a fact underscored by the 1,089 suicides as of September 16, 1993, along with many episodes of senseless violence, homicide, and even multiple murder. As of 1993, Prozac failed to carry adequate warnings of the drug's dangers despite deaths and Kapit's warnings. September 1991, Psychopharmacologic Drugs Advisory Committee held a hearing to review evidence showing links between Prozac and similar psychiatric drugs and psychotic violent acts. For over three hours, more than two dozen Prozac victims or their surviving family members recounted horror stories linking the drug to multiple murders, suicide, attempted suicide, self-mutilation, psychosis, and other nightmarish effects. The committee, however, ignored this information and voted against this information and voted against relabeling Prozac to carry a proper warning of its dangers. At least five out of 10 of the members 
of the psychopharmacologic drugs advisory committee had conflicts of interest based on business dealings with manufacturers of antidepressant drugs including lilly totaling a minimum of one million one hundred eight thousand five hundred eighty seven dollars committee member david dunner of the university of washington prior to participating in the hearing had agreed to report any possible conflicts of interest to the committee he made the startling acknowledgement in his disclosure statement that he had two one hundred thousand dollar studies pending with Lilly. Dunner also reported having received approximately one hundred thousand to conduct an ongoing study of a drug called Paxil. He made no mention of the fact that this study also included Prozac. Dunner also failed to report that he had been paid in the past to conduct clinical trials of Prozac. In one instance, he conducted a clinical trial for Prozac involving 100 people. The results of these tests were submitted by Lilly with its new drug application seeking FDA approval of Prozac. And one day after the hearing, Dunner was scheduled to speak at a Lilly-sponsored seminar in Pittsburgh on depressive disorders, with two similar events following shortly thereafter. Dunner had already appeared at five such seminars, and at the time of the hearing, he knew he was scheduled to attend three more. Despite his financial connection to Lilly, he easily convinced the FDA he had no pending commitments at the present time, which would represent a conflict of interest. Five days after the committee rendered its pro-Prozac opinion, Dunner received yet another Lilly grant this one for a new study on the effects of Prozac on sleep patterns. Since 1982, Dunner has received 1.4 million. I'm not going to read all of the other conflicts of interest and those working for the FDA and those working for the pharmaceutical industry, the revolving door back and forth from the industry into government and then back into the industry, the public relations firms that were hired to destroy all critics and all of Eli Lilly's actions to ensure that none of the information regarding how dangerous Prozac is gets out to the public. We all know this. We all know that our government has been operating this way, increasingly so, for decades. My question is, why did we not stop it? Why did we let this continue? Why are we still allowing American children get destroyed with psychiatric medications? Why are we allowing this? December 2009, prescriptions for psychiatric drugs increased 50% with children in the United States and 73% among adults from 1996 to 2006. United States Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality reported that in 2006, more money was spent on treating mental disorders in children aged 0 to 17 than for any other medical condition, with a total of $8.9 billion. Mental illness is not a disease. There is no science behind any of this. These children are being destroyed. Adults are being destroyed. This information is out there. It's 25 years later. Why are we allowing this to happen? Why do we not care? Infants, toddlers, the United States has become the psychiatric drugging capital of the world for kids, with children being medicated at a younger and younger age.
infants less than a year old on drugs for mental disorders. This is an absolute abject evil that we are all allowing to persist. Weight gain. Why are so many Americans obese? Young children and adolescents who take the newest generation of antipsychotic medications risk rapid weight gain and metabolic changes that could lead to diabetes, hypertension, and other illnesses. The degree of weight gain is alarming. Dr. Wayne K. Goodman, head of a Food and Drug Administration Advisory Panel on the Drugs last summer and Chairman of Psychiatry at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in Manhattan. The magnitude is stunning. So you have children and adolescents who are acting out or perhaps just being children and adolescents. They're brought to a psychiatrist and then they're labeled mentally ill, which will remain until the day they die. Because despite what the profession of psychiatry professes, that it cures mental illness, well, in fact, it doesn't. Because once you are labeled mentally ill, that never goes away. You're always mentally ill, and the fact that it has no science behind it, there is no science behind these diagnoses. It, they are not biological. There is no medical basis for these psychiatric diagnoses. There is no chemical imbalance. All of it is complete and utter fraud. But they are labeled with something that will stigmatize them. And then they're given medications that destroy their brain, create a lot of physical problems, make them obese, make them fat, and then they have to suffer the judgment and the bullying that they will receive from their peers. And so then they're mentally ill and then fat. All of the illnesses associated with these psychiatric medications will remain with them for the rest of their lives. That's what we're doing to these children. And why are we doing this? Is there any, any truth to any of this? No, we're doing this because psychiatrists pharmaceutical industry and those who are being paid off at the FDA and in our government make a lot of money. They don't care that these kids are being destroyed, but apparently neither do the American people because we could have stopped this, but we don't. We allow it to persist. It does not take a rocket scientist to understand that the correlation between Prozac hitting the market in 1987 and the sky rocketing increase of prescriptions being handed out to Americans, children and adults to take psychiatric medication and the sky rocketing increase of those on social security disability for mental illness, the correlation is a result of the psychiatric medication causing mental illness. Tens of millions of innocent, unsuspecting Americans who are mired deeply in the mental health system have actually been made crazy by the use of or the withdrawal from commonly prescribed brain altering, brain disabling, indeed brain damaging psychiatric drugs that have been for many decades cavalierly handed out like candy, often in untested and therefore unapproved combinations of drugs to trusting and unaware patients by equally unaware but well-intentioned physicians who have been under the mesmerizing influence of slick and obscenely profitable psycho pharmaceutical drug companies, AKA Big Pharma.